Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host Aaron and for today's video we're headed to the world of Skull and Bones, which just concluded its last closed beta that had a six hour limit play on it. Now I've heard lots of things. Some people say it's actually pretty good. Some people say ah, it still doesn't feel finished and some saying it is absolute garbage. Now, as I am moving closer and closer to full time, I'm starting to work on a schedule for my videos. And Wednesdays is going to be Reaction Wednesday, where the community gives me a bunch of videos that they want me to react to, and I will pick one to watch on every single Wednesday. And today is the Skull and Bones review from IGN. I have not watched this video it's only five minutes long, and I'm very curious what they say. Now, now IGN normally leans towards positive, so we're going to see what they have to say. And they are claiming this game, Ubisoft, is an action RPG, so it fits in the wheelhouse. Okay, let's do it. Four minutes and 30 seconds. When I first got my hands on Skull and Bones during its last closed beta in August, I was stunned that this legendarily elusive game actually existed. Now, with the release date in February of next year fast approaching, it would seem any doubt that the seafaring adventure won't see the light of day is fading. Now I just want to know if it's going to be good. And after another six hours in the most recent closed beta this past weekend, I find myself more hopeful than ever that this plundering simulator might actually capture the attention of me and my friends. I, I'm, I'm unsure on the visuals, on the cinematic trailers and the stuff that they have released. Visuals look really good, but obviously trailers, you know, might have some CGI that might be doing some stuff to enhance it. This gameplay looks okay. It's nothing that's like, holy crap, but it doesn't look bad. Though the most recent beta included some odd and unexpected changes to the story, my friends and I dove deep into the waters of this ship-based adventures RPG mechanics and came away pleasantly surprised. Those beta First off, if you haven't seen our preview from a few months ago, you should go and check that out because the vast majority of my praise and cautious optimism still applies. Having a chance to develop my sea legs a few months ago, me and two of my fellow scallywags spent a good chunk of the weekend tinkering with our boats and exploring as much of the map as we could before running into horrifyingly overpowered enemy crafts that turned us into driftwood in one second flat. Damn. Smoked. Upgrading and customizing your very own piracy vessel remains one of the coolest things Skull and Bones offers. And that's especially true after the first few hours, once I acquired the means to craft class-based ships with specific strengths and weaknesses to suit my playstyle. For my part, I like to prioritize DPS and enjoy getting in close and smashing the enemy craft to pieces. So I built... It's so interesting that action RPG comes in all shapes and sizes. You think of the Diablo-like action RPG where it's hack and slash and you build your own character. Where this, you're building a ship, PvP, doing quests, leveling up, kind of the exact same thing. I like that idea. That actually looks really fun. The ship customizer. Built the Rammer, a ship that's great for doing as much damage as possible. Meanwhile, the other members of my party built a tanky ship called the Defender and a support-focused ship called the Sentinel, so that when we fought as a crew, we had the perfect diversity of specializations we needed to absolutely crush any poor landlubbers who dared set sail in our seas. Combining these different ship types with various kinds of weapons like long-ranged sniper cannons that do lots of damage versus others that blast large volleys of close quarters fireballs and attachments that adjust various resistances and armor scores made Skull and Bones feel like a true naval RPG. And it felt like my crew had only just begun scratching the surface of what's possible with dozens upon dozens of more powerful... I'm gonna guess based upon playing a lot of games like this melee. So close range, that shotgun play style or running into ships, that is gonna be very popular and very overpowered. 
compared to the sniper version. Awful options locked out for vessels of our level. After the previous beta, I praised Skull and Bones for having a story that was surprisingly more fleshed out than I was expecting. And while that still held true in this second beta, there were also some really bizarre changes to the narrative I don't fully understand. It is too late for me. But maybe you will walk on the free shores of Sandan. For example, in the early moments of the previous beta, I found a dying pirate captain, Abel Rassler, who served as a jumping off point for the rest of the story. Oh, come to loot my cabin, you filthy scrag. But in this latest version, when I went to loot the same ship, the good captain had already expired, leaving me to quietly grab his stuff before leaving. I'm really not sure why this major story change happened. Maybe Ubisoft He's got dead feedback already. that there That's was too much sure. talking in the early part of their cannonball-focused pirate game, or perhaps they just cut this part out of this beta since participants were only allotted six hours of playtime. But it wasn't the only big one I noticed. There were also a few significant dialogue changes, and one of my main crewmates had been replaced by a new character altogether. It's pretty surprising that after all these years of development, they're still making significant story changes in the four months since the last beta. But then again, I suppose that's what betas are for. Take my hand. You're not dying today. Here's hoping that's not a sign that the script's going through too many last minute rewrites this close to launch. For more, check out our previews of Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, and Tekken 8. And for everything else, keep dropping anchor with IGN. It's so weird. Why would they do that? You're talking about a game that's been in development for practically a decade, and you are making story changes, early story changes. I mean, yeah, I guess they're getting feedback and they're like, you need to switch this or update that because that does not make sense. Okay, pretty quick breakdown from IGN. My favorite part of this video and what gets me mildly intrigued about this game is partying up with friends, partying up with the community, going out into the open ocean and finding other boats to fight, hopefully in a PvP or PvE setting. That actually sounds really, really fun. The whole story and that type uh, the experience there, I don't really actually care about that very much. I'm hoping this is actually a game where it's like, I'm bored, you wanna go blow up some ships and we could get on easily, party up easily, upgrade our ships easily, and then either go get blown up or go tear some people up. That sounds like a much more fun experience, a pirate version of World of Warships without the pay to win. That's all I've got, Skull and Bones, coming in February. And I probably should have said at the beginning, this is not a sponsored video. Please consider subscribing. Check out the Patreon. It is the best way to support. And tonight, we will have our podcast. I'm done. Hopefully, you're entertained or at least learned something. Aaron, out. Mm -hmm.